Okay, so I just want to say something briefly about part two of what Friedman calls the OBA framework. Um, and in part two of his book, he um, moves away from working backwards and focuses a little bit more on assessing the actual outcomes. And uh, I think a number of questions arise from this aspect of his work. Um, if we think about something like accountability and the distinction which would need to be made between population accountability and performance accountability. So whether we think of population as a region or whether we think about it as a country, I think traditionally in public administration analysis that would be seen as separate in, in many respects from performance accountability which can be very clearly focused on the experience of users. So in the social care outcomes framework that Derek was talking about, a very significant component of that framework is, relates to how users experience those services. Um, second point or third point there relates to the meaning of the word accountability in this context, in this OBA uh, context and how that might differ from public accountability as we know it or from political accountability and there's been really very little dis discussion around that. Um, in traditional analysis of policy making and framework evaluation and so on, uh, the scope of delivery in the literature is usually uh, categorised between micro, meso and macro. And if we to think specifically about major social policy interventions, it's very, very rare for these to be aimed at whole populations. Uh, something like a, a broad health policy might be in terms of improve, improving population health, for example. But many social policy interventions are aimed at target populations. It could be young unemployed people. It could be people experiencing uh, disability services, for example. Um, uh, uh, something that comes up time and time and time again in the analysis and the reading of, of these issues is the enduring debate over problems with performance indicators. <laughs> so... Um, the lack of agreement, as Flynn suggests, for example, around um, what to measure, uh, around the dangers of data manipulation. I mean, there's been any amount of, of material written about that in terms of health service management and performance indicators and so on, and how and why those have changed over the years to take account or to try to take account of things like data manipulation, and then problems, as Derek said, of attribution. But there's another point, though, if we're thinking about policy making and the, use, um, the outcomes that are identified and the indicators that are identified. And that relates to the fact, I think particularly with OBA, that these are pre presented as something which is very objective, scientific almost, because it's very, very statistical. Now, I think that carries really serious inherent dangers because the selection of outcomes and the selection of indicators is a political thing, it's a subjective judgment in many respects. It can be linked to ideology, it can be linked to political values and can't be presented as something which is purely objective. So I think that's something, that's a very, very important consideration to, ha to have in this mix. Um, the last point there is that the OBA methodology includes an examination of performance measurement categories, things like uh, quantity, yes, quality, and ultimately what Friedman says is we need to ask, is anyone better off? Now, that in itself is very subjective because interpretations of that are going to vary. And, of course, in fact, government, all government policies may not be intended to make people better off. Some of them is about reducing public expenditure in order to save money. Some of uh, social policies can be about making people more independent in the long run, which might make people worse off in the short term. Or if policies are aimed at achieving equality, other people may feel that as a result of those policies that they themselves are not better off. So again, some issues and considerations here. Now, I thought it might be useful just to look at one example of, to illustrate some of the problems when it comes to actually policy making with this approach. And uh, we've selected health policy and how that's treated, been treated by the government in terms of the use of OBA. So we've got the, the outcome there that we have long, healthy, active lives. And I think that demonstrates uh, what Derek referred to as the vagueness of some outcomes. And, and vagueness can be useful, uh, we know, you know in, in many political contexts. And then the indicators linked to that 
are very, very public health oriented in indicators, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think the question would be about why these particular indicators, you know, what's the justification for that? Um, are there others that could be used? Um, but I think the key question is how those indicators and that outcome, it doesn't tell us about how we get to better health and social care policy, you know, if we use Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland as an example. And I think it illustrates the problems if we, particularly if we try to adopt this approach in the lack of a strong policy framework. You know, so what are the policies? How, um, how are those policies justified? How do we know those, those are the best policies? What about the funding details? What about the delivery plans? And I think um, if we were to take another example from another policy area, if we were to look, to look for example, there's and one of the outcomes in the programme for government, one of the uh, outcomes is um, to the number of care leavers who are more likely to, to gain employment. Now, that's probably something which can't be measured because we don't have the data to do that. Um, we, we, know, we will know something about some care leavers, but we, the destinations of all care leavers, whenever they leave the care system, I think will be quite hard to track. And there's a more general problem, I know those people here who work in government, who work in statistics, that we have uh, data gaps. And one concern might be, and I know this is not just in Northern Ireland, but concern elsewhere, that sometimes OBA can be based on what data is available rather than what the best, what data we need and what the best data would, would be. So I think in, in lots of areas of our social policy, in the area of adult social care, for our, uh, for example, we have major data gaps around data on unmet need. We have data gaps in terms of gender equality. Um, we have, we, I think we could identify older people, we could identify any particular area and highlight what we don't know and what we don't have statistical information on. So, and if we base a programme for government on, and its indicators around what we do have, then that's going to be immediately limited. So. Moving on just to some concluding uh, comments. Now, of course, as Derek said, OBA does have some distinctive characteristics, including uh, working backwards from the specified desired outcomes to the interventions which created them. Uh, and while that distinguishes OBA from alternative outcome approaches, it also suggests that OBA is incompatible with them. Um, Cook, for example, has talked about um, some of the benefits, and we don't want to completely obliterate those benefits, that it, um, having this outcome-based approach can actually encourage long-term thinking, and that's a good thing. Um, there has, um, however, it's more complex. Um, the dangers, I think, if we just apply this specifically to our programme for government, the dangers are that we do try to oversimplify this, um, we do try to base too much on statistics, that there's not sufficient evidence on qualitative information, and then the gaps that I mentioned earlier. So I think that raises issues about the suitability of this approach for a programme for government, uh, which is quite different to how OBA is being used in Wales and in Scotland. And there are, of course, successes. I think if we were to identify where the best successes have been, it's been with smaller projects, uh, localised projects where everything can be more tightly controlled and more tightly managed. There's been clear success in some local councils in Wales and in England, particularly around children's services. And I think you know, that, that illustrates what's required, what are the factors that are required for success in the use of this, this approach, but it also illustrates the limitations of trying to use it for something like a programme for government. Um, and we'll, just to say that in Wales as well, the use of OBA in local councils has sometimes been linked to financial reward or to financial penal penalty. And some people think that that in itself has brought some success as well. Now, the, you know, I think just to emphasize what has been touched on earlier is that OBA has not produced any robust or rigorous evidence regarding the impact on policy making. And despite you know, the number of outcomes produced or the number of indicators produced, um, those don't actually reveal a lot 
about the policy intervention that would be required or the policy intervention that would be, would be just, justified. OBA, I think, originally had a more major influence in the production of outcomes and indicators in Scotland and Wales, but I think in more recent times the approach of these jurisdictions has been to um, accept that OBA is not the only methodology that should be used and that they, they have been looking at and using other uh, approaches. Northern Ireland is probably fairly unique in adopting OBA um, in terms of how it has as a, as a framework for a programme for government. Um, and the, undoubtedly, the use, I think we could all see the usefulness of it here, uh, that these high-level outcomes um, perhaps actually maybe though result in some um, lowest common denominator social policies. Because if you've got high-level outcomes which are very vague, it is one way of avoiding or getting over political conflict about policy. And in a place, in a context where you need political agreement, uh, where you have things like the petition of concern, I think that's quite attractive in itself. But it, pro it, it doesn't get us to better policy making, though, probably in the end. Um, but because of that, you know, because of its usefulness in that context, it's probably likely that if we do have a resumption of, this, of the Assembly, that the programme for government will continue to be based on this uh, OBA approach. I just wanted to finish with a quote by Tony Bouverde, which he says that lists of outcomes have been paraded as providing a rationale for government policies, but without any convincing attempt to show how they relate to actual, actual interventions. And I think that's quite an important point to end on. Thank you. Thank you.